guys, so we're about to get started with our stone coat countertop counter renovation here. I do quite a bit of work with resin. It's my favorite medium to work with. And it's a great choice if you don't want to spend money on a marble slab for a countertop or granite, something like that. You can save quite a bit of money. Stone coat countertops is one of the best resins I've had the pleasure of working with. These counters are NDF. We got them cut to size and then we taped off the counters. You want tape but wherever you do not want resin because it's sticky and hard to get off and it's a way to ensure your project's going to come out looking neat and clean with clean lines. So once you get everything taped off, we had to do caulking and stuff because we were replacing the countertops completely here, so we caulked the sides here. Um, another really important thing before you start pouring is to make sure the caulk is, there's no holes, not even a tiny one, because if you have any place where the resin wants to go, you're going to lose any design you put on here. The resin's going to go, you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to have a counter with another sticky mess. So make sure you caulk well. Um, your surface needs to be level because this is a liquid product. When you pour it, it will settle wherever the countertop is not level. So make sure you're level. Um, and then you're going to want to sand the surface down. You could use a sander. You could use sanding paper if you, <laughs> if you want to put some muscle into it, but it, it is possible. Um, we used, I think, a 220 grit sandpaper on here. We did have a sander, so we sanded it down, made sure it was smooth, no rough edges on the board. Um, and then we painted it with a two-part white primer. You can use the Rust-Oleum two-part, or the kit actually came with their primer, white primer as well. And um, we did two coats of primer on here and then let it dry and we re-sanded it again because when you re-sand it, it gives a little bit of a tooth for the resin to hold on to when you end up pouring your countertops. I also took a paper towel and put some isopropyl alcohol on it and wiped the counter down before I got started here just to make sure there's no dust particles, nothing on the counter that could interfere with the resin as it's drying. Um, it's best practices to turn the fans off in the room that you're pouring in. Um, with my artwork, I cover my artwork with a cardboard box when I'm done pouring just to make sure no dust particles come in. It's kind of hard to do that with a countertop, so make sure that you've got all your fans off. Um, we even had our dogs go outside because the dogs can they shed and run around and you don't want to have a little piece of hair stuck in your counter. <laughs> when you get your kit, the first thing you want to check before you do any pouring is that you have part A and part B. Really important, you don't want to get through the whole project and realize that the package was wrong or um, that you had two part B's and all of a sudden you've got to clean up a whole mess of hardener that isn't fun to get off. So, working with this resin, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Because we've only got about nine square feet of cabinets here, we're not going to need this whole gallon of resin. Um, we're probably going to use a fourth of it, and that's probably a liberal amount here. So, use a measuring cup if you'd like. Plastic is best, unless you have a silicone one. Silicone is always good when working with resin because you can let it dry and then peel the resin right out of the container once it dries. But plastic works just the same way. So let's get pouring here. I'm going to use, as I said, a fourth of the product here. It doesn't really matter which one to pour first. However, I have heard that pouring the hardener and then resin, which I'm doing backwards here, of course, <laughs> is best to, for mixing quality. So. However you'd like, the important part is making sure the product is mixed 
completely through. Black cap goes on the hardener. White cap goes on the resin, just so you don't get it stuck later on. You mix the resin and the cap on the hardener cap, and the cap is gonna have to be taken off with a wrench. All right, so to mix, we are going to use a mixing drill bit for paint. We wanna put our mixer in and air bubbles when you mix uh, it's okay we're gonna use a heat gun or a torch if you have it later on to get the air bubbles out of the resin but that's something that is kind of unavoidable here is my silicone spatula I get these silicone spatulas at the dollar store and I use them for my painting they are wonderful because again the silicone or the resin just pops right off of it after I've let it dry overnight. So I'm gonna come in with this spatula and just scrape the sides of my bucket to make sure I've got all the resin and hardener mixed and incorporated together. So scrape your sides, scrape the bottom of the bucket, make sure everything's mixed in there. For this project, the kit comes with two colors, comes with a black metallic and a white metallic. We need more of the white than we do the black for this project because it's a Carrera style countertop and I'm actually going to use a few different tricks that aren't in the stone coat video just because I'm, I'm doing a bit of a customized look on this counter. So you hopefully you'll be able to pick up some tricks and customize your counter the way you want it to look. Here's the packet of white metallic pigment powder. I'm going to mix it in with bucket of resin here. I only ended up using about a quarter of the packet of pigment powder for this project because our counters were not that large. Mix. Depending on how you want your counters to look, you can add more or less pigment powder to them. what the white metallic pigment powder looks like after it's mixed in with the resin. It's a really pretty color and looks great on the countertops when it's poured. Here's the packet of black metallic pigment powder from Stone Coat Countertops. You don't need as much resin to mix with this black metallic pigment because you're not going to be doing as much work with this pigment. I mix the pigment into the resin as best as I can and it comes out into this really pretty black metallic resin. Uh, there's three steps after pouring the white metallic for our Stone Coat Counters Carrera Marble Epoxy Countertops. For the tools you're going to need, you're going to need your epoxy in a bucket like I showed you mixed with your white metallic powder. You're going to need a square trowel. They, the size recommended is an eighth an inch by an eighth an inch trowel, and as you can see, these are square here. This one actually has some triangle ones on the side, but we're going to use the square one. That's um, recommended so you don't scratch the paint underneath with the, the triangle divot. And a paintbrush. Um, really important, they suggest using a nylon paintbrush. They are a little pricey, so... Um, you could use any type of paintbrush you like. The important part is that you make sure the bristles stay in very well. You don't want to end up with uh, bristles scattered throughout your, your countertop when you're finished. So This is a pretty sturdy one. I did spend a little extra on it just to kind of make sure we didn't run into any issues, but just keep your eyes open for bristle loss. Okay, I'm going to take your white metallic resin mixture and put it right in the center of your countertops. This is the fun part. All the way over it. You don't be stingy with the resin. You do want full coverage of the counter here. 
You can use your gloved hand or silicone instrument at this point, but just spread your resin around. You want it to hit all parts of the counter here. Uh, an important tip for any time you're doing any sort of resin project is that resin will flow where resin has been. So if I've got resin right here, the rest of the resin will follow, right? So if I leave a spot right there that I haven't covered in resin or pushed any resin towards, it's not going to move. So this is a great way to control the where your resin is, but also it, it you have to make sure you've touched resin everywhere in order for the countertop to be completely covered when you're through with it. Okay, so I suggest pushing everything to the corners here, making sure you've got completely full coverage. And that's also why taping is so great because if I go over the edge a little bit here, it's not going to matter. I'm going to pull that tape up nice and easy when I'm finished and the resin has started to cure. Set up on a little bit here. Okay, now you're going to use your square trowel and you're going to trowel the resin all the way across here. Just make sure you cover the whole counter with it. Don't worry, those trowel lines will go away in the next step. Chop. They do recommend to do this in the instructional video for this kit by Stone Coat themselves on their YouTube channel. So we start with our chopping motions, and literally, you are just chopping the resin. This is breaking up those lines and providing the, a nice effect in the metallic here. You can also chop with different size paint brushes. That kind of will give you a different effect in some areas. Or use just the edge corner of your paintbrush, surface of your paintbrush, whatever you think looks nice. You want to chop your whole surface. All right, looking good. So at this point, when you've got everything chopped, you could go around your sides and you can use your hands, you can use a brush, whichever you feel is easiest and just run it across the side. You're looking to get rid of the drips on the side here. You're gonna have to do this quite a few times before the end of the project. This, the resin's gonna continue to move. All right, next step is heat gun or torch. And the heat gun or the torch, whichever you have, is going to heat up the resin and pop the air bubbles that you see rising to the surface. Uh, it's a very important step. You don't want air bubbles in your final piece here. Stoko countertop resins is not flammable, which is pretty amazing. So you don't have to worry about it catching fire, um, but like anything, don't overheat it. it. It will start to cure as quicker or what happens if you overheat it, but it, it, it forms a sticky mess and it won't look nice. So I use this Milwaukee heat gun and I have a link to it in the description if you're interested. It works great. It has two settings on it, it's all I really need for resin. Pro tip, put painter's tape around the handle so you don't mess up your gun with a bunch of resin. If you look closely at the bubbles, you'll see it doesn't take much. The bubbles really come right out just with a couple passes. So don't worry about getting it really hot or anything like that. The bubbles are popping. You can see them popping and that's plenty of heat. This also ensures you cover the surface area completely. You can see it kind of moves the resin around a bit, which is really good for the next step, which you guys will see you're kind of painting with a heat gun when you're moving your resin around and 
the next step is we add the color. If you find that it's covering, but there's still little spots that aren't totally covered, like little holes keep forming, and you can see the wood underneath, add more. It means your surf, you don't have enough resin to cover the surface. Okay, so it's looking pretty smooth here. Here's a view from above. From this angle, you can really see how the chopping made a really cool effect in the metallic. Next, we're going to add the black pigment resin onto the counter. Dip the end of your paintbrush into your black metallic resin. Find the area you'd like to start in and start chopping away on top of the white. As you can see, as I chop, I lose some of the black color. That's okay, we want it to blend in. So eventually, you're going to have none of the black on your brush. But that's good because we want the high and low points. We're going to come in again over here. I'm going to speed it up for you just a bit here. So just for the basic Carrera marble countertops, this is all you do, okay? You're going to keep going, you're going to add a few of what I just did with the black on the paintbrush there, and you chop the whole thing until it's blended to your liking. Uh, great tip they give in the video, for the instructional video on Stone Coats YouTube is take a step back. Okay? Really important, no matter what type of resin project you're doing, take a step back, look at what you're doing, see where you want more of a color, and apply. So reassess, and then apply. Reassess, and then apply. Really, really important here. Occasionally, you can come around the sides here, wipe up those drips, make sure it's chopped. If you don't like how strong it looks in a certain area, keep chopping that area, mellow it out a little bit. Personally, I like the white metallic a lot. So, I'm going to make sure that I save a lot of the white underneath. I don't want to do too much of the gray. I'm going to give it more of a, a marble look by incorporating two other techniques that I will show you next. to make it look nicer. If you like it, stop. Now I'm going to teach you my next technique, which is to, we're going to add some veins. You're going to put a bit of the black metallic resin on the end of a wooden stick or ruler, and you're going to run a line of the resin from one area of the counter to the next. Pro tip here, whenever you're running a line over a painting or a countertop or anything, you always start off the countertop. Start off the countertop, end off the countertop. So the line I want for this is going to go from back here to over here. I'm going to start off the counter. Make sure I've got enough to make it that far. The speed is going to dictate how thick my line is. There we go, all the way off. Okay, perfect. Next vein I'm going to use, let's do one coming off of this vein, and running from here to there. Okay, so this is a little more tricky because you gotta start on the board. You don't want a big blob at the beginning, so let it drip off in the cup a bit, almost like the cup is you starting off of the counter. And off. Perfect. Okay, and we want one more vein over on the side here. And there, there we go. All right. Beautiful veins now. It's looking more like a stone countertop there. Okay. After you run your veins like I just showed, you're still going to come back 
and chop like always we are chopping to blend chopping to blend I'm chopping around my vein I'm hitting it in some areas but mostly around it okay just coming in coming out coming in coming out coming in coming out coming in coming out coming in coming out, coming in, coming out. following the vein all the way up same with these other ones in out in out in out okay and we will soften up the lines with the heat gun Okay, so this is method two. We have the chopping method, just plain chopping like they show in the Stone Co. video. This is the vein method. dark. Take your clear resin. I do it in just darker areas just to blend it a little more. Tiny puddle, clear resin. Tiny puddle, clear resin. Same thing here. Take your heat gun and we'll blend it out. Not too much, just a little bit. It adds a little bit more depth. To the counters overall and that's pretty much it now I go over it one more time with the heat gun just to pop any remaining bubbles and let the epoxy cure overnight Gay way to have